So here it is, The Seeds of Aries. This is the second issue of the second volume of Pillars. Pillars is Anathema Publishing's journal. It's their yearly journal that they put out with offerings from many different esoteric authors from around the world. And this year's theme is The Seeds of Aries. Uh, so a look into the martial, uh, violent aspects of life, the universe, uh, but all from a very esoteric and occult point of view. And uh, as some of you know, I was fortunate to be accepted as one of the authors. And my, my own article is right there in the, in the very back. You'll, you'll find it. It's uh, called The Refining Forge. Let me see if I can find the, the first page right there. There's my article. Very, very proud of it, of course. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's that the whole book is just full of these articles by some very well known, some, some less known esoteric authors who have got something to say about the realm of Mars, the realm of Geburah. Uh, from whatever uh, tradition, from whatever point of view, and it's 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 it, well. First of all, it's fascinating. You know, it's uh, not a topic that is treated very usually. It's um, that there, there's just not very much material out there at all on the topic of Mars. It's quite a taboo topic. And having spoken recently to Gabriel McCarry about the process of uh, of publishing the book i can't i can't blame other companies for not wanting to approach the subject it's um uh, it, gabriel mccarry was telling me that each issue of pillars paints that particular year with its particular energy and i can fully fully believe that this will have been a difficult, difficult year for Anathema Publishing. Um, uh, what a topic, right? What a topic. But in the end, what you get is a talisman. Uh, I've spoken in the past about the talismatic qualities of these Anathema Publishing books. And, um, and this is no different, you know, this is absolutely in line with everything else that they do. It's got the energy that it discusses, you know, it's it's full of of martial energy. Uh, my own article in here is about how to use that energy in a healthy way, and it um, it talks a lot about using it to refine your own ego, not necessarily to kill it, because well, I contend that the idea of killing your ego is um, is an illusion. It's not possible while you're alive to, in fact, get rid of it. Uh, and I'm not, in fact, 100% sure that it would be a good idea to. But we can certainly use those martial energies to keep our ego in check. And uh, and I was very, very um, amused to see that, uh, well, uh, because my <laughs> writing style doesn't really fit with the anathema uh, style, some changes had been made. And, you know, I'd agreed that I would go along with any changes that... Um, any changes in, in style, right, uh, that uh, they decided to go along with. And uh, to their credit, they managed to keep the, the, the meaning in everything that I've said. Um, but there are some turns of phrases and I, and I saw them and I thought, I would never have said it like that. And, <laughs> you know, and the, the anger rising in me and, and then thinking to myself, oh, that's actually exactly what I was writing about, you know, the ego and and the process of keeping it in check simply, right, of, uh, of little by little eroding the ego so that, um, well, so that we can better approach uh, what comes after Gebura, right, the higher triad. All right, so, okay, so th those are a few of my initial thoughts about the qualities of, of the book, right? The, the, the talismatic qualities of, uh, of the book. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the, the physical qualities of the book. I mean, this, the, the art by Adrian Baxter is just absolutely gorgeous with this kind of reddish uh, metallic uh, uh, stamp on the front here of this um, cloth-bound cover. Looks really, really nice, and, uh, you know, you can see this... The, uh, the depressed, uh, stamped 
um, motif there. There's another stamped motif on the back as well. There we are. The alchemical symbol of fire. I'm not 100% sure what that is in the middle. Could it be an acorn? Possibly. And the crowning laurels. Uh, and then on the on the spine over here, um, let me just uh, put it next to the previous issue of Pillars, uh, of the volume two of Pillars, Circling the Compass. Uh, I've made a review of this, so you can uh, check that out as well if you're interested. I place them both side by side on my shelves naturally, okay? And I noticed that there were these two uh, glyphs up here, these two little sigils, and you know, that kind of intrigued me. And then I noticed that the top letter is not the same on both the books. And so I started having having a look and I realized that actually if you follow the order of the sigil, then you get the word that you're looking for, right? Over here and then down to the bottom left then starting again in the middle and down and up, then you get the pillars. Very, very clever. And yeah, if, um, if we open the book, uh, at the beginning of the, the kind of preface, there's, um, uh, here we go, uh, Evan Davies writes a prefatory, um, and you can see those those two sigils there and a third one being teased there. And, um, well, Gabriel McCary was telling me that the the next issue is being conceived at the moment and um, the title will be The Wayfarer's Hearth which sounds uh, very, very interesting and certainly sounds like it'll give him a <laughs> an easier year. I certainly hope, um, uh, w wish him a, an easier year, there's no doubt. So this introduction was written by Evan Davies uh, and it was very interesting for me to, to read about, well, their experience of putting the, the book together and um, how it was very auspicious for them that uh, just at the time that they were uh, putting out the first volumes uh, that uh, Mars was entering Aries. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, yet another telismatic uh, aspect of the book. So let's talk a little bit about the contents and we've got uh, the prefatory that I was just talking about, like Evan Davies, and just drawing attention to my to my favorite ones. I mean, they're, they're all very, very interesting and all from different aspects, all points of view, traditions, uh, places in the world, um, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but the, the ones that really grabbed my attention, I guess, would be uh, The Prophet, The Guide and The Trickster, uh, talking about Dakinis and the, 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 the Tantric tradition. Um, I found this one right here. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. I'm not even going to try. And the Blasted Tower of Ares. Very, very interesting. Eat me, drink me about um, consuming blood in various uh, traditions throughout history, including Christianity, naturally, of course. Uh, Dibuk possession, that was fascinating as well. I found, yeah, to ravish and intoxicate was a really, really interesting one. In the hands of the violent divine. I mean, these are all really um, just taboo topics. You know, there, there's no other word for it. And um, the, the, the fight comes through very clearly in in all of these, just in one way or another, you know, um, whether it's a fight with, with oneself or a fight with uh, the external world or uh, a fight with the reader in some cases, you know, I know you're not going to like what you're going to read, you know, this kind of stuff. This comes through in, uh, in at least one of the articles that I can think of um, uh, and so on and so forth. There's these lovely... Um, uh, poems by Jean-Jacques Martineau. Um, you know, mine's not a bad one, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, Daniel Yates writes this really lovely, touching, personal uh, article about his own uh, battle with a, a brain tumour. Um, uh, so yeah, as you can see, just, just lots and lots of different um, different aspects, different ways of approaching this adversarial topic. and. Invariably, uh, this might sound strange, but despite the fighting, aggressive nature of the topic, it's it's always really love that comes through, uh, and um, 
Whether that's intentional or not, it, it shines a really positive light on, on humanity, in my opinion. It's, I'm very, very pleased. And then here are the credits, right, the, the visuals. So the unmistakable uh, uh, art of uh, Leslie Pierre-Paul, which, which opens the book. And there are, uh, there are a couple, couple of others, this uh, very talented Haitian artist. And um, uh, yeah, you can see all the others over here. Um, yeah, including Daniel Yates, of course, naturally. Uh, but yeah, Adrian Baxter's art is <sighs> unsurpassed. <laughs> he really is the, um, the, the the number one great nowadays, isn't he? I don't know who did this one uh, uh, that, that I'm very, very lucky to have at the start of my own article. And the Refining Forge, um, but it's, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. If you're seeing this video and you know that it's you, then please, please let me know. Now the book also contains a CD in the back. There's a, a little plastic pocket and yeah, there, there we go. The CD is provided by Cyclic Law, uh, who are Anathema's subsidiary sister company here in, in Europe. And uh, and yeah, and that's basically going to be my my review, guys. This is going to be my um, my overview for you. I hope it's been useful. I hope that uh, you've enjoyed what you've seen. I hope that it's inspired you to pick up a copy. They, they really are gorgeous, gorgeous objects. There are only six hundred that will be printed. Let me just show you a final thing. This is the. Uh, the bookmark that came with the book and it's lovely it's a new design it's laminated it's of course the art by uh, Jose Gabriel Alegria Sabogal who is clearly a, a good friend of uh, Gabriel Macari's I was saying earlier on that uh, Adrian Baxter's the, the the number one great but um I I, <laughs> I think there, there there might be a a, um, a tie here <laughs> to be honest with you yeah they're both extraordinary artists and uh, we're very very lucky to have them as our contemporaries there's no doubt about it and yeah it's kind of like a pearly shiny uh, uh, underneath the lamination I mean of course the lamination is shiny but underneath it's almost like sparks it's uh, it's certainly iridescent very very difficult to pick up on the camera but um, you're gonna have to take my, my word for it and I really like the kind of gradient sepia going into black and white there so there we are guys thanks ever so much for watching the video don't forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe down below and I'll see you very soon with another review or another video take care bye bye